Hello and welcome to ET Garage. Today's video is going to be about modifying my uh, jack stands. All right. As you can see, I got two of my jack stands down. I actually have six of them. And I got this piece of uh, 316 steel. And I got this steel from a local uh, industrial metal supplier. They have a what they call a scrap pile. And uh, the scrap uh, pile basically gets sold as scrap. Uh, so you pay scrap prices. So I got this piece of... Uh, what I believe is just mild uh, 3 16 plate. And this is the size that I bought. Let me see. From there to there. I forgot the exact length. I actually didn't measure the exact length. I just grabbed it out of a pile and said, well, I hope that works. And I already marked it for, that'll give me six, uh, six plates. And what I'm going to do is cut these plates and weld these Harbor Freight jack stands to it. And the reason I'm doing that is uh, to give these, make these jack stands sit better on my floor. My floor, my garage is uh, pretty bad shape, the concrete. And I should really get a new floor, but I don't want to spend the money. I just soon uh, spend money on other things. My funds are limited. And uh, the steel plate, I ended up paying uh, about less than $18 for, which is cheap. 3 sixteenths plate like this, this size. And uh, I got the six jack stands. I'll weld them to this plate, and that will make these sit on the floor a lot more sturdier. It gives it a little bit more widespread uh, stance, and it also strengthens it. Now, before anyone says anything, no, these are not the... Uh, um, Harbor Freight jack stands that they recalled some years back. Back when they had that recall, I checked all my model numbers. I actually have two different model numbers here. Uh, I bought them several years apart. And there's a little bit slight difference between the two. I don't know if you can see them. But they're basically both three-ton uh, jack stands. And I have six of them. And I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this up. And how am I going to cut that up? is with a sawzall or my angle grinder. Now I'll probably use both. My angle grinder, I have the uh, diamond tip blade on and uh, I prefer that over the fiber blades. The fiber blade makes a lot of dust. There's pros and cons to both. I think the fiber, in my opinion, the fiber blades cut better, but they make a lot of dust and a lot of sparks. Uh, sawzall, in some ways it's better. Uh, in some ways it ain't. It tends to shake everything around. That's a bad thing. If you get the good Diablo uh, or carbide blades or any of the, the uh, carbide blades, metal cutting blades, they're a lot better. Right here I have just the regular metal cutting blade. I think I'll probably try both, see which one works better. And then I'll cut the all six pieces uh, with which one, everyone works better. So let me get going on that. I got all six pieces cut out and the sawzall worked best this the uh, angle grinder with the diamond blade the di my diamond blade was completely worn out so that I'm gonna throw in the trash and up using a fiber blade that made so many sparks and stuff and it was hard to control compared to the sawzall I went back to the sawzall and cut the rest of the piece with the sawzall uh, I did just use the plain uh, Diablo uh, six inch metal cutting bimetal blade that worked really well uh, the reason I didn't use the carbide one is this is a little worn and this is way too long for cutting thin stuff like this. This 3 16 uh, I'd rather save this for heavier stuff. But uh, yeah, I was actually surprised how well the bimetal blade worked. I got two of them. I only used the one. 
and it still seems like it was cutting really good. I did use cutting oil on it. So uh, I went ahead, I uh, put on a flapper wheel and dressed up the surface. Removed, you can get this uh, real thick surface on these uh, cold rolled steel from the uh, metal process, metal making process that you have to grind off. And what I do is I just ground off the areas where I'm going to be welding. And of course, I deburred the edges, took all the sharp edges off, rounded the corners out a little bit. Probably could you do a little more uh, deburring on it, but for what I'm using it for, this will be good. I'll go ahead, uh, get the welder set it up, and I'll uh, weld these two. And uh, then I still got four more to do. I still got to deburr them and grind them, clean them up, and all that good stuff. Uh, let me get the welder right now. I got it set up for uh, 304 stainless MIG. I'm going to change it out to uh, regular steel flux core and get the welding. Okay, the welder set up. I got this on here. I didn't take measurements. I'm just eyeballing it on there. It doesn't have to be perfect. I got my welder set up to what it says should work with the 3 16th. And this isn't quite 3 16 but it's thick enough that I'm not worried about burned through. Uh, so uh, I guess let's go welding and see how I do. I'm not a professional welder, by the way, so don't. Uh, you might not want to do what I do. Just saying. Okay, hopefully you can see this. Uh, of course, I, I burnt off the uh, Pittsburgh heavy-duty three-ton sticker. But uh, I'm pretty happy with the welds. I did have a little problem with burn-through. I just cut the power back and that fixed it. Uh, like I said, I'm not a professional welder in any way. You might not want to do what I do. Uh, but I'm happy with these welds. This is definitely a lot stronger and safer than it was before and a lot more sturdier. Uh, this uh, welding is one of those things, the more you do it, the better you get at it. So by the time I'm done to 6-1, I'll probably have it down pat. Perfect. Of course, the last one. Uh, but I'm going to end the video here. Uh, only thing else I have to say is you, whether you do something like this, it's something you have to determine. For me, it was uh, basically cost me less than $20 because I already have a welder. And the abrasives and the cutoff blades and the tools and all that stuff just sitting here. Uh, I mean, you could factor in the cost of that if you want. How much uh, welding wire I use, how much electricity, uh, the cost of the uh, wearing out the blades and the abrasives and all that stuff. And of course, your time. But uh, I am real happy with this. I think this is a lot better. Uh, don't do necessarily what I do, especially when it comes to welding, especially flux core. Flux core should be done outside or should have really good ventilation. I have my circulation system going in here and I got that going. That helps a lot. I really should have a better ventilation system. That's for your health. Uh, I'm old, so I ain't, I ain't, you know, I ain't worried about as my health as, as much as uh, I should, but I should uh, take better care of it when it comes to stuff like that. Uh, if you're young, definitely want to follow old safety procedures so this way at least you have a chance of making it to my age but uh like i said i'm real happy with this i'm going to get the other five done and back out in the garage and also i'm going to put a probably put a coat of paint on them too uh, so i got to do that but uh i want to thank everybody for make who made it this far and i want everybody to have a great day and god bless